once claimed that one should stop considering Africa as an exotic place, um, but in these days more like a place open for business. Well, you know, when you, when you look at a place as an exotic place, you, you stop, you, you, you want to make decisions with your heart and business decisions shouldn't be made like that. Africa has its challenges, but it's not a country, it's a continent. And so it will always have challenges, like Asia will always have challenges. Africa has the same contrasts, it has the same challenges, and for the person who goes there knowledgeably, does their homework, does their work, you can mitigate risks and you can see opportunities. In Africa, we had managed to leapfrog traditional technologies and we were seeing far much greater adaptability to technological change than in some developed markets. So you will, you, you will see companies come out of uh, Africa that will be champions around the world. You know. We like to feel also a sense of a united Africa. It's an ideal. But to the hard business person going on the ground to do business, you have to know there's a difference. It's an identity from South Africa to Nigeria to Egypt to Morocco. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself into big trouble. Uh, so, but it is part of our heritage to have this diversity, to have this richness of, of culture, of language, of ethnicity, of religion. It is part of our richer identity. And, and, and we have to embrace that. As an entrepreneur, my philosophy is always about reaching out to meet the needs of people. What, what, do, what do people need? And how can we respond to those needs? From there, everything takes care of itself. How much would you say is your um, uh, company or your companies are influenced by your personality, by your identity as an entrepreneur, as a leader? I, I, as an African. <laughs> right. Well, you know, uh, because I am the founder and I am still around, uh, the, my identity plays a lot in, in the company. But you always want to limit that because you want, you want an institutional identity. The leader must set the tone on, on things like values. As an African, do leaders in the private sector mm -hmm. or elsewhere, do they have specific responsibilities because they're in Africa? as leaders, as representatives of authority. When you do a business in Africa, you must also be cognizant of the fact that uh, one, Africa is a young continent. 60% of the African population is under the age of 30. So it's, it's a continent of young people uh, looking for employment opportunity, looking to be inspired, uh, this can be a dividend for the world. It can also be a major problem for the world. We are right now at that juncture where we can choose. Soon we will not be able to choose. I believe that um, as, a, as a business leader, I must take up as much time as I can to show the young people the way. How important, looking back, how important was that five-year litigation process to get the telephone license? It was extremely important because one of the core things that came out of that identity was everybody knew that I was fighting a battle against corruption. I could have solved that problem in one day, okay, by just agreeing to say, okay, I can accommodate this one, I can accommodate that one, it would have been over. And the people knew that. But I stuck it out. I went through the courts and fought the battle. So it says to people, A, you can, you can stand up for what is right. 
You can say no to corruption. Africa needed to hear that message very loud, that it is possible to be in business, to, to, to do it uh, with a zero tolerance to corruption, and you can be successful. So if you employ 77,000 people, let everyone know that you're against corruption. If you employ two people, let them know that you're against corruption. And remarkably, we will get rid of it. I would like to come back to the role of um, African entrepreneurs, African leaders, to close that leadership gap we are witnessing still in, in Africa. What is your specific contribution to that topic? When others will look back at my business career one day, I hope what they will see is that one of the things that I sought to portray was that there is a line between business and politics. That you don't go into politics that you may prosper in business or use your business to advance politics. I also want people to be aware that leadership in today's modern world is not just about political leadership. Uh, there is business leaders, they are religious leaders, they are cultural leaders, they are many types of leaders. And you invest in education quite a bit. A lot. Well, you know, our main... And can you do more? We can always do more, for sure. We, we, in education, we are interested in really in three things. First and foremost, we, we took a major responsibility as a company from the outset because we believe in the issues of our day. Just like I respond today to Ebola, when I started my business, the big crisis was another pandemic, HIV AIDS. And it was creating millions of um, orphans. And I thought to myself, these orphans will become child soldiers and they will hurt us in the future if we do not educate them. So I threw myself at the education of orphans and pushing people to take more steps to educate orphans. So at any one time, like I said, we have some 40,000 orphans on our education programs. But orphans who you take as little become adults. So we realized that amongst these youngsters, as we were helping them, some of them were incredibly brilliant. We are beginning also to look at increasing the volumes of kids. Because 40,000 sounds like a lot. But it's nothing against the background, the fact that, you know, this is a continent with 400 million young people. Okay, so we, we, we are now beginning to develop online training programs for primary and high school so that kids can train using smartphones and uh, SMS platforms and things like this uh, to try and just uh, broaden the base of our education program. What about the danger of a considerable brain drain for Africa? Do you see that problem, top talent leaving the country? It's a reality of our times, okay? Um, you know, the, the, the truth of the matter is the biggest export out of Africa is not diamonds or gold <laughs> or, or platinum. It is um, skills. The challenge to dealing with skills drain and um, brain drain, as somebody would use that expression, is not trying to stop people leaving, but trying to create opportunities at home. 
that enable them to stay. That is the challenge of entrepreneurs and governments and policymakers. We've got to make Africa exciting and interesting. That's how we will reverse it.